Okay, let's talk about color grading your photos using GIMP, specifically using the Luma curve and the RGB curve. So we'll start by opening up an image. And to open up your curves tab, we're going to go to colors, curves, and on the right side here, you'll see what's called a Luma curve. For now, it's just a diagonal line, but we're going to add something called a node or a control point that you can use to turn this into a squiggly curve. In this context, think of a pixel as a small part of your image that can produce any combination of your three primary colors, red, green, and blue. So the first thing we want to do is mentally split this luma curve or diagonal line into three sections. So you have your shadows at the bottom left, you have your midtones in the center, and you have your highlights or the brightest part of the image at the upper right. So we'll start by left clicking in the center to add a node in your highlights. So what happens is if you click and hold that node and you drag it up, you're going to lighten every color in every pixel in your entire image. But wherever that node is, that's what's most drastically affected and it fans out from there. So in this case, your midtones are drastically affected and your highlights and your shadows are affected as well, but not as much. Similarly, if you drag that node down, it's going to make all your pixels darker or all of your colors darker. Now you can see this creates a pretty drastic change, and for that reason, we don't want to use just one node. So if we reset, we'll create a node in the center, a node up here, and a final node down here. A very common thing people do is something called the S-curve. So they'll drag this node down to darken their shadows, and they'll drag this node up to brighten the highlights. By doing this, you increase the contrast and get a much more punchy photo, but, like anything, you can overdo it. I mean, if this is the look you're going for, then you're not overdoing it. But personally, I find less is more in a lot of situations. So if you do a slight curve like this, hit OK, you can see it makes a very drastic change in your image. There's the before, and there's the after. Alright, let's try another example. So you go to Colors, Curves, Create your three nodes, drag down the shadows, drag up the highlights. Now you don't always want to do these the exact same way. You might want to keep your shadows down in the center or make it more drastic than your highlights and take your highlights node and drag it further off center from where it was, like this. So that way you're only affecting the most bright parts of the image. Hit OK. But you can see that took 10 seconds and look at the difference before, after. All right, now let's get into the RGB curves. So if we go to colors, curves, and we're back to our Luma curve, we'll do what we've always done, which is add three nodes, drag down our shadows, bring up our highlights, and the image does look better. But now if you click value, instead of having your RGB curve, you can just go to your B curve or your blue curve, and you can add a node here and bring up your blues and give it a much colder feel. Or conversely, if you bring the primary color down to a negative, you essentially add its complementary color. So every primary color has an opposite or complementary color. So if you drag down the blue, you'll get yellow. If you drag down the red, you'll get cyan. Or if you drag down the green, you'll get magenta. Now of course you can bring them up as well and get, and get your primary color. But basically you can use something like blue, bring it down in the negatives, and you can give it a much warmer tone. So it doesn't always have to be just about making something more punchy or higher contrast. It can be about getting a feeling you're trying to invoke from the place. So if we took another example like this, you can do your basic S-curve or play around with it in other ways. And then you could go to blue, and let's say I want this to feel nice and warm, nice and sunny. You drag your blue down, and you give it a more yellowy feel. Or, what you can do is add three nodes to your blue curve, the way we've done to our luma curve. And that way you can bring your highlights and make them extremely blue. So make the sky super blue, and you can drag your shadows down into the yellow. And you can get pretty cool looks like this. So it doesn't always have to be subtle, just usually it will be.